Good morning. <clears throat> Today is Monday the 20th and we're going to start with the daily reflection on the New Testament. Therefore, all things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, do ye even so to them. For this is the law and the prophets. Matthew 7 verse 12. Perhaps the best known teaching of Jesus is the golden rule. It echoes down through the centuries as the supreme law of living. Treat others the way you want to be treated. This simple expression contains the secret of how to succeed with people. The ultimate message of meaningful human relationships. Uh, and the quintessential statement on extending kindness and courtesy to others. Indeed, we might wonder just how different this world would be if people lived their lives according to this grand imperative. What would happen to the hungry and the needy? What would become of warring nations? What scientific and technical progress could be made? What wonders could be worked if we simply treated others the way we desired to be treated? Sorry, I'm a little out of breath because I left my Jeffrey book upstairs. And so I had to run upstairs and run back down so that I could make good time. But anyways, today is Matthew chapter 13 verses 1 through 29. And we've got two parables here and Elder Holland speaks about one of them. Sometimes I feel like I get too formal with him when I call him Jeffrey. But you know what? I think of him as a second dad, so why not? Okay, so two parables. One here is the, well, they're both sowers. Um, the first one is uh, the parable of the sower um, where he puts it on good ground and then stony ground. And um, after he says that to the multitude of people, he says, them with ears, let them hear, eyes to see. His disciples come into him and say, why are you teaching in parables? And he said, because... They're like the the seeds on stony ground. If they don't have root, if they don't believe, then what's the point of teaching them the doctrine? I'm paraphrasing, of course. Um, and then the second parable is of the wheat and the tares. A sower sowed some good seed in his field, and in the night an enemy came and sowed tares. And then as they began to spring up, the servant said, Didn't you sow good seeds? Why are there tares? And the owner, the sower says, uh, an enemy must have done this. And the servant says, well, let's go pluck out the tares and get them out of here before it's too late. And the owner says, no, if you tear up the tares, you could pull up some of the wheat as well. They're, let's wait until they're fully grown. And then in harvest time, we'll separate them out. So here's what good old Jeffrey has to say. If justice were to take its toll on Jeff Holland right now, he would be in deep trouble. But fortunately, even though Jeff has passed the beginning of his accountability at age eight, the Lord might say Jeff's accountability is still increasing. He is learning more. He is doing more. Let's withhold judgment and watch him for a while to see if he can merit more blessings. It is like the story of the wheat and the tares. Don't jump in too soon in judging people, including yourself, that the tares are there is unmistakable and undeniable. But in his love and mercy, the Lord is willing to say, I will not execute judgment now. Let's wait a little longer. This principle has been at work in my life personally and in all of our lives collectively. We are kept, protected, encircled, and loved until we can work out some of the silly, petty weaknesses in ourselves. But to work them out, we must. But work them out, we must not to. This church cannot survive forever on people who have not decided yet on which team they want to play. We have to have people who will decisively take a stand and be counted in defense of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We have a tendency to hedge about this a little, but I don't believe the Lord smiles on that. But he kept telling either or parables. And we say, oh no, either or, it's too simplistic. There are too many shades of gray. But he kept telling those decisive stories. Think of them. 
We just talked about one, the wheat and the tares. He did not say anything about roses or petunias or onions in the middle. He said there were some wheat and there are some tares. How will he judge against that standard? I don't know, but I do know he is going to be the judge and it will be a righteous judgment. I don't think we will be surprised with those decisions. I know in my own life the fruitful, righteous, constructive part that is wheat and I know the destructive, dark, less wholesome part that gets qualified as a tear. He knows that I know that already, but he waits a little longer to see if I will repent of the latter in my maturity. He talked about sheep and goats, nothing about lions and tigers and leopards and elephants. Then he gathered fish in the gospel net, and there were some good fish and some bad fish. And we say, what about the mediocre fish? Nothing there about mediocre fish, just some good ones and some bad ones. And we say, how can that be? Everything in my experience says there are more shades of gray than that, except deep down in my soul, I really do know the things I should do and the things I should not do. And I cannot think of a circumstance in which I'm really confused about that. I know the kind of courtesy I should show my wife and my children. I know the kind of kindness I should use when driving a car. I know the kind of literature I should read and the gospel study I should be doing. I struggle and strain and want to come up with some shades of gray, but to no avail. It is almost impossible for me to ever say, well, Lord, I just really didn't know what I was supposed to do. When it comes right, when it comes to right and wrong, we always know. God wants us to stand up and be counted. We have to show up and at the welfare assignment. We must serve others. We must pray. We must study. We must pay our tithing. These are moral acts of will. They are assertions of ourselves in which we say, here am I. We are not, we are not lost in some nebulous maze. No, we know clearly what we are to do. Finally, we are to step forward, shoulder our arms and say, I believe in the battle. And if anyone is going to fight it, I have to fight it. And if it's not I, who? And if it's not now, when? And if it's not right here, where? Someday there will be a harvest. As surely as we are born and as rivers run to the sea, there will be a moment of truth. The wheat will be separated from the tares and each will be bound. One taken to the barn and the other burned as stubble. That time is not yet, but it will be someday. Yikers! We're just going to let it lie. We're going to let it sink in. We're going to be like, you know what? Thank goodness justice doesn't come on me right now. Thank goodness for that. Okay. And now I will leave you with prayer from a diary of prayer. Today is the 20th. Okay. This one is Kierkegaard Journals. Lord Jesus Christ, a whole life long didst thou suffer that I too might be saved, and yet thy suffering is not yet at an end. But this too wilt thou endure, saving and redeeming me, this patient suffering of having to do with me. I who so often go astray from the right path, or even when I remained on the straight path, stumbled along it and crept so slowly along the right path, infinite patience, suffering of infinite patience. How many times have I not been impatient? Wish to give up and forsake everything. Wish to take the terribly easy way out, despair. But thou didst not lose patience. Oh, I cannot say what thy chosen servants say, that he lift, that he filled up that which is beyond the, that he filled up that which is behind of the afflictions of Christ in his flesh. No, I can only say that I increased thy sufferings, added new ones to those which thou didst once suffer in order to save me. Goodness gracious.
that one gets a tabby. The part where he says, this patient suffering of having to do with me. You've already suffered so much, and yet you have to continue to suffer because you have to deal with me. All right. It is a humbling morning. It is uh, Monday the 20th, and that was Matthew chapter 13, verses 1 through 29, and we do verses 30 through 58 tomorrow. So we will see you then. Have a great day.